check if we have a quorum and advise accordingly. If it is still checking, is it? If the, we have a quorum so that we can commence on the hour. We can't seem to hear. Uh, Excellency, Excellencies, I would like also to repeat that we do have the quorum. So I would hand over to the to His Excellency President Sri Ramaphosa to, to open the meeting. I thank you. Secretary General, you were a little bit too faint, and I hope that that will improve. Your Excellencies, Heads of States and Government, Chairperson of the AU Commission, Ministers, Commissioners, esteemed participants, I now call this the 34th Ordinary Assembly of heads of state and government to order. As we gather here today, we are mindful of the devastating impact of COVID-19 pandemic on both our lives, as well as the livelihoods of our people because it has extremely changed how we conduct our business. We hold the 34th ordinary session virtually because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The world is adjusting to the new way of conducting multilateral diplomacy. Our union is not left behind as we hosted our two back-to-back -back virtual extraordinary summit with success in December in 2020. Allow me, Your Excellencies, to request the assembly to observe a moment of silence in remembrance of all the departed souls who succumbed across many countries on our continent to COVID-19. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Let us observe a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, we may be seated. I now hand over to the African Union Commission Chief of Protocol to announce the order of proceedings of the opening ceremony. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Majesté, Excellence, Monsieur Cyril Ramaphosa, Mademala, Président de l'Union africaine, 
Excellence, Monsieur le chef d'État et de gouvernement, Excellence, Monsieur le président de la Commission de l'Union africaine, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs les ministres, Excellence, Monsieur le vice-président de la Commission de l'Union africaine, Mesdames et Messieurs les présidents des organes de l'Union africaine, Mesdames et Messieurs les secrétaires exécutifs des CER, Mesdames et Messieurs les commissaires, Excellence, distingués participants en vos titres et qualités. Nous sommes réunis ce jour pour les travaux de la 34e session ordinaire de la conférence. The of the Union, and we thank God for us in... Se fera en trois phases. Des allocutions de bienvenue, d'ouverture par les présidents de l'Union et de la Commission. La cérémonie de passation des témoins entre les présidents entrants et sortants de l'Union et le lancement du thème de l'Union africaine pour l'année 2021. Pour le moment, je voudrais vous prier tous de bien vouloir. Merci. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Heads of states and government, members of the African Union Bureau, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Mr. Musa Faki Mohammed, Your Excellencies, members of the Executive Council, heads of AU organs. Heads of regional economic communities, commissioners of the AU Commission, former heads of states and government, distinguished guests, fellow Africans. I call this meeting of the 34th ordinary session of the African Union Assembly of heads of state and government to order. Allow me to begin by thanking you all for attending this virtual meeting of the assembly. We are holding this 34th ordinary session as a virtual meeting instead of a physical gathering following a decision of the AU Bureau at its meeting of the 30th January, 2021, which was also attended by the chairs of our regional economic communities. This decision was based on an assessment by the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention of the risks of holding a physical gathering of this nature at this time, when the rate of infections on our continent is still rising. As a continent and as a global community, we are engaged in an unprecedented struggle against the COVID-19 pandemic. 
This disease has caused great suffering and hardship across our continent. It is not only a severe health emergency, it is also a grave economic and social crisis. It has deepened global inequality and threatens to set back progress towards the achievement of our sustainable development goals. Despite the upheaval caused by this disease, our response as a continent has been about partnership, resilience, innovation, and the sharing of strategies, experience, and resources across the continent. The people of this continent have shown themselves to be resourceful and agile. Significantly, this pandemic has demonstrated the importance and the value of our continental body, the African Union. It is through the structures of the AU that we've been able to drive a collective response to this crisis, marshalling resources for the benefit of all our people, as well as striving to ensure that no country on our African continent is left behind. As we prepare for the massive task of vaccinating our populations against COVID-19, we are looking to the AU and its partners to provide the assistance and the support that we need. Even as we have fought a monumental struggle against this disease, our continental body, the African Union, has brought into existence the African continental free trade area. We know that COVID-19 is not yet defeated and that there will be difficult times that lie ahead but we draw our encouragement from the great opportunities that the AFCFTA presents for the growth, development, and prosperity of our continent. We also draw encouragement from the progress we have made in bringing peace and stability to parts of the continent that have long been plagued by conflict. We know that there is still a long road to travel to silence the guns on our continent, but we have shown that we are both determined and capable of achieving that goal. The events of the last year have demonstrated that no country, no people and no continent can stand alone in the face of the challenges that confront humanity. From pandemics to climate change, from war to poverty, we need to overcome shared problems through collective action. As the countries of Africa, as the member states of the African Union, we have once again reaffirmed through our actions, our commitment to the principles of unity and solidarity. It is this commitment that has enabled us to travel this far. And it is this commitment which will enable us to travel further towards a peaceful, just, and prosperous future. With these words, I once again welcome you all to this esteemed meeting and uh, hope that we will have productive deliberations and take decisions that will take our continent even further. I thank you. We thank the president has now the honor to 
invite uh, Musa Faki Muhammad, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, to make his statement. Excellency Siri Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa and the current Chairman of the African Union. Excellencies, Head of State and Government, Honorable Ministers, Deputy Chairperson Deputy Chair of the Commission, of the Commission Commissioners, Commissioners, Chief Executive, Executive of the Regional Economic Communities, Ladies and Gentlemen. The 34th ordinary session of the Assembly of the African Union is being held today in a very special context. First, there is COVID-19 pandemic which has had an unprecedented impact on the normal functioning of all the organs of the, of the Union, which forces us to this virtual meeting far from the warmth of the physical meeting to which we are used. Then, the session of the Assembly coincides with the end of the four years term of this commission. This is an opportunity for me to express to all the African states and leaders my grateful thanks for the support and care I have constantly received throughout my mission. It is a unique experience that I have lived alongside you and which has strengthened my determination to make the African Union, with your support, the instrument par excellence of integration, peace, and development of the continent. Here, I would like to pay special tribute to all the head of state, champions of their respective themes, on whom I would have liked to mention for the valuable contributions they have made to our collective endeavor. Excellence. Excellencies, lady, excellencies, heads of state and government, ladies and gentlemen, the year 2020 will go down in history as the one that witnessed the spread of this pandemic, coronavirus, whose health, socio-economic and political consequences remain yet to be assessed as the pandemic continues to wreak havoc. Of course, our continent has not uh, escaped this tragedy, even if its negative uh, effects have been countered and indeed contained by the admirable political will of our leaders. This will was expressed through the development of a joint strategy, a multifaceted strategy, including the mobilization of public authorities, the private sector and the international community to support uh, the Africa, Africa in uh, this uh, in the face of this terrible pandemic. The unity of action and solidarity among African states has been admirable and demonstrates our resilience and our ability to face adversity together. In uh, our fight against this pandemic, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, Chairman of the Union, has demonstrated exceptional leadership. This leadership was manifested through a series of innovative initiatives articulated in the acquisition of medicine and equipment, the treatment of the thorny issue of the debt of Africa and the imperative need of acquiring vaccines against COVID-19. President Ramaphosa has thus distinguished himself by showing deep concern about the effective action which makes him the indisputable African Union in the fight against COVID-19. Collaboration and coordination backed by the sharing 
of responsibilities anchored in the principle of sub subsidiarity have enabled our continent to resist to the viral virulence uh, of COVID-19. This is the moment for me to commend the appropriate organs of the Union, which through Africa CDC make a remarkable contribution to our fight against this scourge. The upheavals induced by COVID-19 have not diverted and digressed us from the priority issues of our Union, in particular regional integration, issues of peace and security, governance and development. The establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area, one of the flagship projects of our organization and its implementation on 1 January this year is a strong vector for the integration of our continent. This integration is the very raison d'etre of our organization. We know that with the development of this free trade area and the success of this uh, free trade area depends on the free movement of people and goods, the establishment of infrastructures and the absence of any form of intra or interstate violence. The ambitious project, silencing the guns, an important strategic objective lies at the very heart of our action for peace and security. The correlation between the issues of peace and security with economic exchanges, the right of establishment, the construction of infrastructures, the individual and collective development of citizens, the involvement of young people and women in socioeconomic development has assumed here a predominant place. Terrorism, community conflicts, violent extremism, violent election related crises, transnational crime and are uh, the real gaping wounds of Africa which prevent it from moving forward. We must put an end to these tragedies which stick to the continent and tarnish its image in order to rekindle the hope of Africans and to build the Africa we want. All my action over the past four years has been guided by the concern about strengthening our union both in its internal structures and in its presence on the international scene. Internally, the institutional reform aims at boosting the effectiveness of the Commission to make it the engine of change. It is also intended to be an adequate response to put an end to the dysfunctions and the shortcomings that have marked the life of the Union. At the international level, we have endeavored to elevate the rank and the voice of Africa through the establishment of fruitful strategic partnerships, respectful of our values and taking into account our interests. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this session of the assembly will have the historical particularity of electing the leadership of the restructured commission and uh, Thus, uh, overhaul the new commission will have to complete the reform, fulfill without delay the pressing expectations of the states and quickly settle down to execute the flagship projects of Agenda 2063. If there is one sector that is particularly close to my heart and on which I admit the term that is ending has not given the prominence it deserves, it is very much culture. Africa has a vast cultural and artistic heritage, which because for a long time it has been ignored or buried under the yoke of colonization has not contributed as it should to the shaping of the African personality. It is to place the theme back at the center of building an African conscience and an African identity that the African Union has decided to dedicate uh, the year 2021 to arts, culture and heritage levers for building the Africa we want. The new commission therefore faces an immense and exalting challenge. The cultural and artistic wealth of Africa has uh, a common unifying base capable of galvanizing the common wills of African peoples those of the continent, as well as those of the diaspora. I thank you for your kind attention. We thank 
the chairperson of the commission, I was saying earlier on that we had three uh, statements at the opening ceremony. Then we have the second phase, that is the handing over ceremony, that is, uh, which comprises the presentation of the incoming bureau. Your Excellencies, allow me then to move to the next item on our agenda, which is the announcement of the Bureau of the Assembly of the African Union for 2021. And the chairperson of the African Union in 2022. I will now invite Ambassador Idris Mohammed, the permanent representative of the Republic of Djibouti and the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps in Addis Ababa to announce the incoming Bureau of the African Union for 2021 and the chairperson of the African Union for 2022. Mohammed. Ambassador Idris Mohammed, you have the floor. Ambassador Idris Mohammed should be in Addis and should now take the podium. It's muted. I'm now going. If Ambassador Idris Mohammed is not able to do it now because might be having problems in logging on, logging in, I will now ask the Acting Secretary General to prepare to present this. Acting Secretary General. Thank you. Excellency, uh, the Chair of the Assembly, it's my pleasure to announce the composition of the Bureau, as you have clearly indicated. The Assembly Bureau for the 2021 to 2022 is composed as follows. Chair, Democratic Republic of Congo. The first vice chair is Republic of Senegal. The second vice chair is Republic of Comoros from the Eastern region. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot to indicate the regions. It's very important. Uh, Congo is from the central regions. Senegal is from the Western. And now as I read Comoros, 
is from the east, uh, followed by Egypt, the third vice chair from the northern region. The reporter is the Republic of South Africa from the southern region. I thank you, Excellency. I thank you, Excellencies. I submit. Thank you, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. We congratulate and welcome our new bureau and uh, wish them all the best as they take on the huge responsibility of advancing our continental agenda. We reaffirm our commitment to lend them our continued support throughout their tenure. We also take this opportunity to congratulate the Republic of Senegal in their election as chairperson of the African Union in 2022. We look forward to your assumption of the role in 2022, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, colleagues. I now hand over back to the AU Chief of Protocol. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai l'honneur de vous redonner le micro. For what this I want to give you the floor now for you to hand over. Thank you. Now that we've done with the formalities, for our Bureau, it is now my opportunity to address you with a view of handing over to the incoming Chair of the Union. Excellencies, we are meeting, as I said, at an unprecedented moment in the history of the African Union. Countries and societies around the world have been shaken to their foundations by this deadly and devastating pandemic. This pandemic has been a stark reminder of both our vulnerability as well as our interconnectedness as the human race. It has also demonstrated the value of our pan-African ideals of unity, solidarity, and cooperation to fulfill our common destiny. Fortified by our unity, we have stepped up to the challenge. Africa has come into her own, led by this, our African Union. Today marks the end of South Africa's tenure as the chair of the African Union. When we assumed the chairship of the African Union in February 2020, the world was a completely different place. As a continent, we identified several priorities for the year. We agreed to focus on the promotion of peace and security as part of the effort to silence the guns in Africa, to also support economic development and integration through the operationalization of the African continental free trade area also to advance the economic empowerment of women, and finally, to support good governance and democracy. Yet within a matter of weeks, the coronavirus 
pandemic forced us to urgently reprioritize both our programs of action and the deployment of our resources. Our most immediate and pressing concern was to manage the impact of the pandemic on the people of our continent. We worked with urgency to develop the Africa Joint Continental Strategy for COVID-19 and have effectively implemented it through the various structures of the AU. We have been ably led by the AU Bureau, which has been at the forefront of coordinating the responses by our member states. As part of our continental response, the Bureau appointed six prominent and distinguished Africans as special envoys to mobilize financial resources to support our national health responses and assist in the recovery of our economies. These special envoys are Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela of Nigeria, Dr. Donald Kaberuga of Rwanda, Dr. Ben Kalfa Abderan Hamname of Algeria, Mr. Trevor Manuel of South Africa, Mr. Tijan Tiam of Cote d'Ivoire, and Professor Mbaya Kakwenda from the Democratic Republic of Congo. These outstanding envoys have held extensive engagements with a number of important institutions in the world, the G20, the G7, as well as multilateral institutions like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund to mobilize support for middle and lower income countries to mitigate the economic impact of the pandemic through debt relief, the cancellation of debt, the deferment of debt payments, as well as the provision of new funding. Thanks to these and other efforts, the IMF and the World Bank have deployed significant financial resources for the COVID-19 response on our continent. Yet our work is not yet done. Access to concessional finance will remain crucial as countries rebuild their economies. An injection of fresh resources by the IMF through reallocating and issuing new special drawing rights with a bias towards the developing world will correct the glaring inequality in fiscal stimulus measures between advanced economies and the rest of the world. As the African continent, we established a COVID-19 response fund to raise resources for the continental response. Significantly, it was our own member states that made the first contributions towards the capitalization of the fund. In responding to the pandemic, we have been at the forefront of innovation. We established the groundbreaking Africa Medical Supplies Platform to assist AU member states to access affordable medical supplies and equipment. This effort was led by another special envoy, Mr. Strive Masiiwa of Zimbabwe, who took on the weighty responsibility to coordinate the private sector effort to procure critical personal protective equipment and other essential supplies to combat COVID-19. 
In establishing this platform, we have given practical meaning to the mantra we often repeat that we are committed to developing African solutions to African problems. We have harnessed the excellence that exists on our own continent before searching for expertise beyond our shores. Our response to COVID-19 has been driven, coordinated and capacitated by our own scientists and medical experts, mainly located within the Africa Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention. And now it is our own vaccine acquisition task team that is leading our efforts in the next frontier of the pandemic to acquire vaccines for the people of our continent. As we will report later, the task team has done outstanding work in both securing substantial quantities of COVID-19 vaccines and mobilizing financing so that all African countries can access vaccines for their people. We have stood firm on the principle that the global fight to contain the pandemic must not and cannot leave any of the countries on our continent behind. We have affirmed on all international platforms and in every multilateral engagement that Africa stands and works as one. This is a principle on which we have been consistent, not just with regards to equitable access to medical supplies and vaccines, but also with regards to financial support and debt relief arrangements for vulnerable countries. Despite the enormous impediments presented by the pandemic, our continent is today firmly on the road to economic integration. On the 1st of January, 2021, the African continental free trade area came into operation, realizing the vision of the founders of our continental body and the economic integration and development. And through the Johannesburg Declaration, the AFCFTA came into being. As we work to rebuild our national economies in the wake of the pandemic, this continental free trade area will be instrumental in driving trade, investment, job creation, business development on the continent through increased manufacturing and the industrialization of our continent. It will enable our recovery to be all the faster and stronger. Ours is an African Union that is practically working towards greater peace and security. Conflict and war on the continent remains a grave threat to our developmental aspirations. We know well that silencing the guns in Africa is a long and arduous process. We have agreed to extend the implementation of the AU Master Roadmap of Practical Steps for Silencing the Guns in Africa for a period of 10 years, from 2020 to 2030. We have further agreed that there must be periodic reviews every two years of our implementation of this objective. Last year, we began the new decade for women's economic and financial inclusion, which states our commitment to scale up actions 
for gender inclusion towards sustainable development. We said that we would leverage Africa's industrialization under the African continental free trade area to advance women's financial and economic inclusion. During the extraordinary summit of the AFCFTA held in December, 2020, we highlighted the need for trade facilitation to support Africa's business women and as well as entrepreneurs. Today, we present to member states a proposed summit decision on the program of action on African women in trade. This will be underpinned by a women in trade monitoring platform, which will enable state parties to annually report on progress made to strengthen women's participation in the free trade area. South Africa strongly supports the Women, Gender and Development Directorate of the AU in its call for an action plan to increase women's access to financial services. This includes tailor-made financial products for women with reliable means to save to access, to transfer, and to borrow money. As the AU, we should also develop a decade action plan to help member states determine and implement key flagship activities towards women's economic empowerment. We all remain concerned at the high levels of violence against women and children on our continent. Therefore, we request the assembly to adopt a decision to develop a convention of ending violence against women and children that will amplify our commitment to promote, to protect and to fulfill women's as well as girls' rights. To also take a decision to adopt a decision to convene a women-led peace forum attended by heads of state and government and to implement the decisions of the Peace and Security Council to institutionalize the office of the Special Envoy on Women, Peace and Security. To also adopt a decision to establish a heads of state level circle of champions that can champion and drive the necessary change. We also call on member states to ratify the International Labor Organization Convention 190 on eliminating violence and harassment in the world of work. Would like to commend Namibia for leading in this regard. It is our firm belief that the economic empowerment and emancipation of women will go a long way in ending the scourge of violence against women and girls on our continent. The African Union must be unequivocal that all human beings, regardless of sex and gender, are both equal. At the founding conference of the OAU, one of Africa's most celebrated sons, Kwame Nkrumah said, open quotes, there's no time to waste. We must unite now or perish. No sporadic act, no pious resolution can resolve our present problems. Nothing will be of avail except the United Act of a United Africa, close quotes. Indeed, your excellencies, there is no time to waste. If we are to overcome this pandemic and address all the challenges that our continent faces, we must forge meaningful partnerships 
and pursue greater cooperation. We must continue to implement the institutional reforms necessary for the African Union to become a professional and self-sustaining organization. As we hand over to South Africa, the Baton to the Democratic Republic of Congo, we are determined to continue working with the President Chisekedi to ensure that Africa becomes an integrated continent that is politically united, based on the ideals of Pan-Africanism and the vision of African Renaissance. I would like to extend my gratitude to the chairman of the AU Commission, His Excellency Musafaki Muhammad, and the way that he and I have worked during the course of this year, it has been nothing but outstanding and exemplary and cooperative. I'd also like to thank members of the Bureau and also the members, the regional economic communities, the AU Commission, the Africa CDC, led by Dr. John Kengasong, who has been a shining star and a great leader in our fight against COVID-19. I'd also like to thank the various envoys that we appointed to work with us both to meet and address the COVID-19 challenge, as well as the envoys we are appointed to help us to silence the guns on our continent. I'd also like to thank the international community without whose support the chairship of the AU for 2020 would have been far more daunting as a mission. I also want to thank heads of the various AU institutions, as well as the staff of the AU Commission for all the support that they gave us during this period. And your excellencies, it has been a joy to serve alongside all of you during this period. And as I hand over to His Excellency, President Felix Chisekedi, I hand over with joy knowing that the work that I took over from President Al Sisi will indeed be continued under the leadership of President Chisekedi. I thank you. Thank you very much. Nous vous remercions, Monsieur le Président, tout en vous souhaitant Thank you very en... much, Chairperson. We all acknowledge the, the daunting job that you do during these very challenging times. Very solemnly, I'm going to invite His Excellency, Mr. Tisekedi Chilombo, Chairperson of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the incoming and new Chairperson of the African Union, to make his acceptance statement. Nous avons la passation. Oh, well, well, we have the handing over first. The chairperson of the commission is going to stand in for the outgoing chairperson of the union. To symbolically hand over the flag of our union to President Chisekedi. 
and wish him the very best as he takes on this task of leading our union. Congratulations, President Shisekedi. And I now hand over the flag as well as the gavel to you as our new chairperson of the AU. Thank you very much. Here is the flag. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Cyril Matamela. Thank you very much, Mr. Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, President of the South Republic of South Africa. Thank you for handing over the chairmanship to me, which I received with a lot of pleasure. I know that you placed the, the you did a lot of work. And I hope I'll be able to rise to the, to the challenge. But I promise you, Anthony, that I'm going to work as hard as I can to step into the Majesty, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs, les chefs d'État et de gouvernement. Majesty, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général des Nations Unies. Distinguished Heads of State and Government. Monsieur le Président de la Commission. The Secretary General of the United Nations. Excellence. Chairperson of the African Union Commission, distinguished ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. C'est un immense honor que tous les États africains ont. It is a great honor that all the African countries actually did to my country, the Democratic Republic of Congo, through my humble presidence de notre organisation continentale. La présence. Appelé à pour thème principal patrimoine, levier pour l'édification de l'Afrique que nous voulons. Nous voulons en effet une Afrique avec une participation active et massive et massive des mulheres et des jeunes en durable et inclusif. Jamila. إنني أقدر جسامة مهمة التي أتقبلها بتواضع وبدعمكم الدائم وبدعم أعضاء هيت المكتب وبجاهزية منظمتنا المفوضية على دعمنا أتقدم بالشكر للرئيس سيريل متى ميلا رامابوزا والذي في ظروف صعبة بسبب الجائحة تمكن من حشد جهود القارة والشركاء pour cela je propose qu'il soit le champion du programme de vaccination et de lutte contre la pandémie de COVID-19 Je salue chaleureusement et remercie fraternellement Son Excellence, Madame. I want to sincerely and warmly thank Her Excellency, Madame Salewak Zuede, President of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, and His Excellency, Mr. Abi Ahmed, for the warm welcome that the people of Ethiopia have never stopped to reserve to member states during our meetings at headquarters here in Addis Ababa. May I also avail myself of this opportunity to sincerely thank Mr. Musa Faki Mohammed, Chairperson of the African Union, who is playing host in this hallowed premises of the headquarters of the African Union. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a singular privilege for the Democratic Republic of Congo, who is taking over the baton today as the chairman of the African Union, at a symbolic but highly significant moment when we all when we were marking the 60 years after the death of a great son of Congo, Africa, Mr. Patrice Emery Lumumba. Mr. Lumumba had faith in the great destiny of Africa. And he did not hesitate to organize in August 1960 in Kinshasa, at the time called Leopoldville, the last Congress of the history of the great Pan-Africanist movement. 30 June 1960, just before his tragic death, 
he declared, and I, and I quote, Africa is going to write its own history. And it will be from the north to the southernmost tip of the continent, a history of glory and dignity, end of quote. It is on the foundation of the memory of all Pan-Africanists that I intend to uh, build the, the, this year, that is a continental organization at the service of its people. This vision, which is actually seen in the first part of the Pan-African, this is going to have nine pillars, which is well detailed in my plan of action. Art, culture, and heritage constitutes the basis of African renaissance and affords us the opportunity to look back at our roots. The roots, which is the cradle of inventions, innovations, and a way of actually ensuring his own survival. Culture is, like Leopold Sedar Segor used to say, it is at the beginning and the end of everything because it covers every aspect of human life. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we take over as chairperson of the African Union, our continent is facing a major challenge, that is, the challenge of silencing the guns. In the Sahel region, the sons and daughters of Africa in that area are losing their lives to terrorism and barbarism. In the Central African Republic, peace, the peace and stability of the, of the elected institutions are being challenged by rebels and armed groups. In the eastern part of my own country, the Democratic Republic of Congo, there is, like, like I always said, there is insecurity caused by local armed groups and terrorism, foreign terrorist movements, namely the ADF NTA. A similar event you can see in the Southern African region, a region that is always known for its stability and peace. And yet today we see terrorism taking root in the Northern part of Mozambique. Ladies and gentlemen, the continental organization at the service of its people is one that should be built on the integration of the continent. And I want to actually salute the progress made in the ratification of the continental free trade area. The start of trading started, the start of trading in January 2021 under the leadership of former President Mahamadou Isufu. We thank him sincerely for the key role he played in, in, in the AFCFT. Yes. The start of trading in January 2021 within the AFCFTA is actually an act of economic independence for the continent. But however, we still do have challenges considering the, 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 the differences in the industrial development of our countries. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, nobody saw the COVID-19 pandemic coming it actually caught the entire humanity off guard and led to the loss of lives and restricted movement of persons and even offset our economies. Although Africa was relatively less affected by the pandemic, our continent was not spared. And so we want to welcome and thank the, ingenuous, the ingenuity and resilience of our continent as we all stood up to fight the pandemic. Thanks to our former or previous experiences in times, of in times of adversity and our ability to adapt, we should not lose hope and we should not even give in because we should bear in mind that there are other pathologies that still continue to loom over our heads. And sometimes these pathologies are even more dangerous like malaria and HIV AIDS. And so we should pull our efforts together and work with our international partners to, to face all these major scourges. 
it is important that our organization should strengthen the African, the African Centers for Disease Control, Africa CDC, for it to be able to meet challenges, health challenges, navigate these challenges as a specialized institution of the African Union. Ladies and gentlemen, in the synergy with regional economic um, communities, we're going to pull our efforts together to advance peace and security, pursue the operationalization of the AFCFTA, promote culture, arts, and African heritage, and also combat climate change, expedite integration projects, among which we have the, the, the construction of the Great Inga Dam, consolidate the initiatives of the African Union in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic and in the prevention of other diseases. Learning from the lessons of the pandemic, over and above strengthening our health systems, this is the time for us now or never to invest even more in education and scientific research. It is in the strategic interest of each member state to earmark uh, a huge part of, of its budget to the development of human capital, which is our greatest resource, the only resource that we can effect, effectively mobilize to resolve Africa-specific problems and to overcome global challenges. Based on my vision of a continental organization at the service of the African people, I am going to take away this organization with your support and help. I'll take this organization away from meeting rooms, away from our, our computers and the, the secretariat. I intend to take this organization into classrooms, into refugee camps, into marketplaces in our cities, and of course, into our fields and farms of our villages. Ladies and gentlemen, promoting a Pan-African com community conscious of its history, its artistic potential, and the value of its cultural heritage is not and should not be an option, but a duty. We have to achieve this goal together throughout this year by relying on the, on, the, on the nine pillars which constitute our strategic vision. This is the price. And I am persuaded that this is the price that we have to pay to actually meet the goals of Agenda 2063, which will ensure prosperity grounded in inclusive growth and sustainable development, peace, security, and full equality between men and women in every sector of human life. In conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, let us continue to weave year after year the, the mat of African integration. Unlike Joseph Kizebo once said, Africa is not going to be developed by outsiders. Africa will be developed by itself and its own people. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. We have come to the end of this uh, opening ceremony. And now we have the launch of the theme for the year 2021, and uh, which will be done by President Tshisekedi Silombo. And I have the honor to give him back the floor. Majesty, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
I want to launch the theme for the year 2021. And to this end, I pledge to support the activities of the theme of the year. And I want to encourage all the heads of state and government to do the same. The launching of the theme will mark the end of the opening ceremony, the continuation of the deliberations of the assembly will be in a closed session. I thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Mali as uh, the champion and leader of uh, this theme wants to take the floor. Republic of Mali, you have the floor. Mr. President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, current chairman of the African Union, Excellencies, heads of state and government, chairperson of the African Union Commission, ladies and gentlemen. I have the great honor to read out the message of uh, the president, uh, the, the head of state of the transition in Mali, who unfortunately is not able to participate in this meeting. And at the same time, he wants to present his apologies. I have the honor to read out the message of the president. And I quote, First of all, I want to congratulate most sincerely His Excellency President Felix Tshisekedi, President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and to all the heads of state, members of the Bureau of the Assembly on their brilliant uh, election, and wish them full success. Mr. Chairman, I want to reassure you of the full support of the Republic of Mali throughout your term of office. My gratitude also is addressed to His Excellency President Ramaphosa, Rais Jumhuriya Junub Ifriqiya, and Rais Al Mutahiyati Wilayat Wal Tihad Al Ifriqiya, on all the efforts that they have put forward in order to achieve منظمتنا المشتركة خلال عام 2020 ولا سيما ديناميكية المشاورات المنتظمة والحوار المتواصل الذي أقره على مستوى هيئة المكتب وكذلك تنسيق التعامل الإفريقي مع وباء كورونا ولذلك نشكركم خالص الشكر سيد الرئيس رمفوزة سيد الرئيس سيدات والسادة وسادة دول الحكومات وكما تعلمون فإن عام 2020 كان عاما صعبا للعالم ولوجه الخصوص لإفريقيا بسبب التأثير السلبي والاجتماعي والاقتصادي لكوفيد 19 على بلداننا عيد السيطوان أفريقيا has shown its resilience in the implementation of its continental agenda in the areas of peace and security as can be, as be borne evidence with the decisions that have been adopted at the 13th and 14th extraordinary sessions of the assembly convened in December. The items on the agenda of this session and uh, is I think in the same dynamics and with the adoption of adopt, uh, important decision for the important for the promotion of integration and the development of Africa. To do so, Africa, uh, that is the item relating to uh, reforms of the Commission, uh, the organization, and the African common response to COVID-19, and also with the launch of uh, the theme of 2021, that is art, culture, and heritage levers for building the Africa we want. 
As you're aware, Mali is the leader of the theme that is art, culture, and heritage, which has just been launched. I want to reassure you that despite the changes that have taken place in Mali last year, my country is honored and is resolutely determined to pursue this uh, task that has been entrusted to it uh, by the Assembly of the African Union at its uh, session in February 2020. In order to enable the sector of arts and culture to also be the base for peace and security, the growth and integration of Africa, I want to make a solemn appeal to all the member states of the African Union to implement the relevant provisions of paragraph five of the decision adopted in February 2020 at our previous session, which states, and I quote, takes note of the lack of budgetary allotments for, to the sector of art and culture and heritage, and consequently appeal to the member states to earmark enough funds and budget for this theme. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Mali fathoms and measures the impact of COVID-19 and uh, therefore, uh, at the fund uh, is at, uh, for in response to COVID-19, and it has made a voluntary financial contribution and also to Africa CDC and also to uh, the uh, fund established by the African Union in response to COVID-19, 1,960,571 US dollars. Despite the socioeconomic uh, challenges faced by